Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're having a really good day. Special shout out to those of you on the east coast of the US, the northeast part of the US. I know you've had snow this weekend, which is crazy. We've had some really warm days. In fact, we've had our hottest days this year. Totally unseasonably hot weather here uh, in the mountains just west of Portland. And so I don't know what that's going to do to my garden, but hey, there we go. Um, I hope that wherever you are, though, that you are staying safe and that you and yours are safe as usual with the world trying to come to terms with COVID-19 and some places going back to work, some people having to go back to work and having no choice about if they go back to work or not. And other people, you know, deciding to stay home because they are not sure whether it's safe. So wherever you are along that spectrum, I hope that you are indeed safe and healthy. I want to talk to you today about conversions. I want to talk to you about what it would take for you to convert an internal combustion engine car to electric. Now, if you are somebody who already owns an electric vehicle, then obviously either this is a hypothetical for you, or maybe it's a, a project for a second car in your family that you might happen to own. We only have electric cars in my family and we've been driving electric since 2007. But for some of that time, we had an electric vehicle and either a hybrid or occasionally we had an internal combustion engine vehicle as well. For, for a while, we had a Volvo 240 because we had no other choice. We needed something big that we could afford, that we could haul the kids stuff in. And so that was that was a vehicle we had for a while. My wife had a Smart for two um, a diesel before the electric came out, because again, needs must last recession she needed something to get to and from work and the the hybrid that she previously owned was too expensive so the reason i'm focusing on conversions today is we are facing uncertain times in terms of the economic uh, crisis that is likely going to follow on from coronavirus um, and a lot of people are losing their jobs a lot of people can no longer afford electric vehicles and we've talked about that before on this channel affordability of evs is one of my uh, one of my common um themes that I return to. This week I did a video on whether you should buy an electric car now and kind of the too long didn't read was you should buy an electric car if you are somebody who's in a job and you have a lot of good credit and you can actually afford it then you might be able to get a great deal but everybody else is pretty screwed right now which is where we come to conversions. I want to know what it would take for you personally to convert an internal combustion engine vehicle to electric. Now conversions used to be the mainstay of the electric vehicle world. When I first started getting involved in EVs, they really were the only way that you could own an EV, unless you bought a really quirky, weird EV like I did. I had a three-wheeler that was super weird and quirky, but I worked on that car and I upgraded its battery pack. I built my own plug-in Prius. So I've done my fair share of, of wrench turning, as it were, and I used to be I used to be heavily involved with classic cars before I got into EVs. So I know a lot of you would go, yeah, no, I'd not convert my own car because I don't know what I'd need in terms of battery pack. I can't weld. I can't do all of these things. But I'm coming with you today and so coming to you today and saying, OK, what if someone had developed a kit for your particular car? What if someone said, OK, we've developed a kit for your Ford Fiesta or um, I don't know, your GM Cruze. Um, we've come up with a um, a car that you can that you can buy, um, a kit that you can buy for your car rather. And it includes everything you need and it's plug and play. You don't have to do anything other than just remove the smelly engine, the exhaust, maybe change the differential so it has a motor integrated into it. And we've designed a special battery pack that will fit in your vehicle with no modification to your vehicle. Would you buy that kind of kit and convert if it left you with a usable vehicle that maybe had 100 miles range? Would, would that be of interest to you, especially if it was like a half of the cost of a brand new electric car? Or are you someone who's like, nope, my electric car has to be 100% built by a particular company and I'm not interested in anything else. It must be 100% electric from the factory. I'm not interested in converting. Because personally, I think converting is about to have a resurgence. We've got some fantastic people out there doing great stuff reusing Tesla battery packs, reusing Tesla motors. I could list off a whole list of people who um, have been working, both individuals and companies, um, who are working on, on open source patent, uh, sorry, open source 
reusing of, of, of closed source components. And Damien McGuire comes to mind. He's doing great work with um, Toyota motors out of Toyota and Lexus hybrids and using them to drive EVs. We've got people working to hack Tesla drivetrains so that they can use salvaged Tesla components to drive um, conversions, which is something that obviously Tesla would probably not be very cool about, but at the same point, Tesla's not letting anybody reuse parts from a salvaged Tesla in another Tesla, so why not use them in another EV? And this is kind of also feeling out the ground for, for the project that we are going to be working on with our project car, which we agreed to buy just before coronavirus hit. We are still committed to buying it and hopefully we will buy it when this all goes away. Um, it's a 1974 com commuter car or city car. We are going to basically strip it down. We're going to take out the old motor, which I don't even think it's in the car anymore. Um, we're going to try and use used motors, batteries and controller technology or open source controller technology to rebuild this car and get it running. And one of the thoughts was to put a 50 kilowatt motor in it from a from an old hybrid um, and then purposely not run it at 50 kilowatts because obviously putting a 50 kilowatt motor in a vehicle that was designed to operate with six kilowatts, it would cause disaster, especially with those wheels and the suspension and the steering system. But that's where we're thinking about going with that technology. And I'm, I'm curious to see if you would be open to a kit to allow you to convert your car to electric. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all the kind words this week. We did try some different videos this week. As I'm sure you can appreciate, it's kind of hard trying to make content right now because um, we've only got a very limited amount of stuff that we can film out in the big wide world. I can film here at the house, but obviously I'm really careful to not give any details about where I actually live. Um, can't film in every room. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we've been doing is green screened. Um, so you'll see me on the weekdays, you know, next to the filing cabinet and whatnot. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, the physical space still exists and technically I've still got the keys, but I can't go there and film because of the restrictions on movement and everything that exists locally. And so we are filming on a green screen and then just composting me into that picture to make it look like I'm still there. So it's, it's a bit challenging. We are working ways around it. But if you've got any ideas for content you'd like to see us make, please let us know. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. As always, keep evolving.